Today I've got a really nice project for you for the DIY or beginner woodworker. In this, a set of portable freestanding shelves, which I've designed to use standard sized timber you can get anywhere to cut down on the workload. And produce a set of plans you can get from my Etsy store that shows the cut lists, the layouts, the jig that's required, and all the tips and tricks. Now I can't do any more for you than that. Any woodwork project has a certain amount of work to prepare the wood to size and shape. At one end of the spectrum, you start by felling a tree, cutting the timber into manageable bits. Then after drying it out for months, you use all kinds of expensive saws and planers to get it to a point where you can finally use it. Today, we're at the other end of that spectrum where someone else has done all the work for you. Minimal work is needed if you start with the right size prepared timber. On today's project, I'm going to be substituting broom handles for dowels. And although you can't get broom handles in the range of diameters that you can for dowels, they're a lot cheaper and absolutely perfect for a project like this. So for these shelves, I'm going to be using this, which some people call furniture board. With this particular one, its official name is EGP. That's Edge Glued Panels. So what you find, if you come and have a look, is it's actually bits of pine all glued together, then planed and sanded. So what we end up with is an incredibly flat piece of pine that's quite big, and you can buy them a lot wider than this as well. And because the pine is alternated and at all different angles, especially if you look at the end grain there, it's an incredibly stable piece of timber because they're orientated in different ways. You're not going to get the cupping that you would from a single piece of timber which means it's more stable and stay flatter over time, as long as you don't mind seeing these little bits of timber all stuck together. Now these are really popular, you can find these in most DIY shops, and really quite handy to use for this type of application. Now this piece I've got is exactly two meters long, so I've decided that I'm gonna have two shelves of exactly one meter long. That means all I have to do is make one single cut in the middle, then I've got my two shelves. Now today I'm not going to use power tools to cut this, I'm just going to use a handsaw. And generally what you find is that the, the more teeth you have per inch on a saw, the finer the cut. But the problem is, this is a tenon saw, as in cutting a mortise and tenon. The problem with this saw is if I'm cutting a board of this thickness, by the time I get this far in, I've got this strengthen the piece on the top. So this won't go through the whole piece of timber. So I can't actually use something like this on a piece of timber of this size. So I'm just going to use a very basic standard wood saw, the sort of thing that you'll find in most people's sheds. Now this isn't going to make the best of cuts because it's fairly rough, but we can always tidy that up with a bit of sandpaper afterwards. Now the important thing with this cut is that we make it exactly perpendicular across the board. We don't want to cut on the wonk, that's what we call it in the trade. So I'm going to be using a square on this just to make sure that this line is completely perp perpendicular to this edge. As for the position of it, as I said, it's going to be exactly one meter from either end. But to be honest with you, for this project, if you're a few millimeters out one way or the other, no one's going to know. I would highly recommend anyone working on their own to invest in some quick clamps which will give you another set of hands to hold with. Cutting a long board like this, you need to support the free end so it doesn't break its back during the cut. I'm just using a piece of timber and a clamp under the end to help support it. At the end of the cut, it will want to bind on the saw, like it did to me here, but keep cutting all the way through to avoid damaging this final edge. 
And after tidying up the end cuts with an initial sand, suddenly I have my two shelves. What? Two, three, nine, seven. That's three mil short. I'm gonna have to get on to weights and measures, I think. Five, nine, five. I need to get four uprights out of this 2.4 meter long timber. So as it's a bit short, I opt for five, nine, five millimeters for each one. Even if you have an exact 2.4 meter length, you can't get four 600 millimeter lengths from it because each cut will take a couple of millimeters because of the curve of the blade. So I've just made a jig so I can drill the holes for the dowels in the uprights in exactly the same position, top and bottom of each upright and making sure that these dowels are spaced exactly right. That means it's all gonna work and we're gonna have quite a nice angle on the uprights. And the measurements are from one end of this piece of MDF, 80 millimeters to the first dowel position and then another 49 millimetres to the next one. This 49 millimetres is half a dowel, plus the thickness of the shelf, which is 18 millimetres, plus another half a dowel, plus three millimetres. And I've worked out that that three millimetres gives you just quite a nice angle on the uprights between these two dowels. Now, all of this is reference from this face because this bit of MTF is actually wider than my uprights, plus by a few millimetres. So I've just marked on here that this is the face I need to reference. And from the end of the uprights, this is the face as well. Not this one, that wouldn't be good. So with that little bit of sanding, all my uprights are complete. So now all I've got left to do is to sort out the dowels, or should I say broom handles. Now there's two ways of cutting dowels to the right length for a project like this. The first way is to let them protrude past where you want them, glue them up, and then flush cut them with the surface that you want them to end up with, and then just sand them down. Or you cut them to the right length to start with, and just make sure that they don't protrude and they just sit exactly where they should do. The only problem with them protruding and then cutting them back is you really need the right saw to be able to do that. You need some sort of flush cut saw and not everyone has those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you both ways and you can make your own mind up. While we're looking at different ways of doing things, here is three ways to accurately cut dowels. The easiest is with a mitre saw if you have one. If you don't, you can go old school and use a mitre block, which they still sell, and a tenon saw. If you don't have either of these, you can still get a straight perpendicular cut by using a sheet of paper wrapped around the dowel. If it wraps exactly round itself rather than spiralling up and down, then it's perfectly perpendicular. 
You can then use this as a guide to carefully saw a perfectly square cut. With everything cut to length, I dry fit the pieces to see how they fit. Now is the time to sand any oversized dowels or make any adjustments if required. With everything looking good, I give the dowels and the inside sections of the uprights a final sand, as it's easier done now than once it's all glued together. If your dowels have a tight fit, you really don't need much glue to hold everything together forever, and my dowels have a really tight fit. Once the frame is glued and assembled, I check to see if it's square and all in the same plane. With both of them adjusted and now looking okay, I use a damp cloth to remove any excess glue. So both of these frames are now glued up and it's important before they gain any strength to make sure that they're square in this direction, which you would have just seen me do on the corner of my workbench. It's also important to make sure that they're in one plane and the uprights aren't like this or like this. If they were, they would be rocking on my workbench and one of these was just now so I sort of twisted it straight. This workbench is pretty flat and now I've got no rock so I know that they're both in the same plane and having checked on the corner I know they're both square. So we're going to leave those for an hour or two to gain some strength and then I'm going to come back and inevitably where the dowels meet the frames every now and again there's some holes here and I'm going to come back and show you a little trick how to fill those holes. Before filling any holes I realised I still have to trim the dowels that I left long so I use my hugely expensive Parkside Japanese pull saw to cut them as close to the frame as possible. Although this did a reasonable job some excess was still left protruding. From experience, I know that this is better removed by a block plane now than hoping a sanding block is going to remove this end grain before the material around it. I grab a really nasty handful of sawdust out of the dust collection bucket and mix it with wood glue.
I then forced this into all the gaps that I see, the worst of which was where the broom handle tapered in at the end more than I thought and left a void all the way round. With all these holes filled and sanded, I reassemble the shelves and make sure everything was level and the uprights similar in angle. I then draw a line parallel to the floor. Conveniently, the depth of my spirit level was just right, so I use that to draw the line. I also draw a line between the two lowest corners at the top. I then trim all the uprights so the tops and bottoms will all end up horizontal. At this point, I decided to give the tops a really good sanding to round them over, just so they're safe with no sharp points for pets or children to impale themselves on. Working with softwood like this makes this quite easy and very satisfying. After wiping down all the surfaces to remove any dust, I clean up the workbench environment with some clean paper ready for varnish. When I opened the tin, I was somewhat surprised at the colour of my new oak varnish, but carried on anyway, hoping that it really would do what it said on the tin. So there it is, complete in the house and loaded up with all the important stuff. And I must say, this is a really nice project for the DIYer and came out rather well, even if I say it myself. And as I said earlier, the plans for this project are on my Etsy store. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in having a look. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So until next, you're not impressed, are you? Until next time, I'll see you then. This is the last time you're coming on one of my videos. Did I tell you that?